I recently beat the original Alone in the Dark, which is widely believed to have birthed the modern survival horror genre by bringing it into three dimensions. It didn't hold up all that well compared to games nowadays, but it was still a fascinating portal to the past. The overwhelming success following the game warranted a sequel, Alone in the Dark 2, which released one year after the original in 1993. However, this wasn't the only Alone in the Dark game to release in 1993. During Alone in the Dark 2's production, a spin-off was in the work as a promotion set for release right before Alone in the Dark 2. That game was Jack in the Dark. Jack in the Dark is a short game where you play as Grace Saunders, a child lost in a toy store that is ruled by an evil Jack in the Box. Compared to the story of the original, this sounds a lot more whimsical. It also no longer has combat, only puzzles, which was probably due to the time constraints bought by it being a promotional teaser. That's the other thing. Because this is only a teaser, it's incredibly short. That's right, folks, we're having a mini-episode before exam season finally ends. The first game was about 5 megabytes, while this one is a singular megabyte. Supposedly, it's only 30 minutes. Let's take a look at this thing. But first, we have to try and get it to run. Most DOS games aren't too difficult to run. You use a program called DOSBox, drag this file into the shortcut, type the name of the exe file, and you're good to go. Here's what happens when you do that for Jack in the Dark. I didn't know what that file was, but I did see a similar one with different numbers at the end in the game's folder. I tried replacing each of the files ending in 16 with 00 to see if it would run, and it technically did, but that's all that it did. I believe the 00 files were for the introduction, and the 16 files were for the rest of the game, so it loaded up the assets for the main game instead of the intro, and it just kind of stayed there. I could pause, but that was about it. Jack in the Dark is Abandonware, which is a game that is no longer distributed, making emulation the easiest option. Unfortunately, every single copy of the game I could find had the exact same error, so I ended up finding an online emulator later instead. I had to use two, one of which had music but was broken and laggy, and one that had no music but ran properly. Jack in the Dark starts with Grace Saunders knocking on the door of a toy shop on Halloween. Why? Great question. There are also an assortment of Christmas decorations and themes scattered around, which is pretty odd, but I guess it does make sense since this game was distributed in December, and of course because of the public's chronic addiction to turning Christmas into a two-month thing. This game looks a million times better than Alone in the Dark. If this is what we can expect from Alone in the Dark 2, I'm actually quite excited. There are much more detailed textures for each background, so this toy store feels like an actual toy store while the original felt like a man walking through colored planes forever. The door locks behind Grace, and the jack-in-the-box starts to laugh. This game controls exactly like Alone in the Dark with one major difference. Instead of choosing an action in a menu and then holding space to use it, you activate all actions from the menu itself. Grace picks up a drum, a dime, and an old lamp. She puts the dime on the candy machine and gets some sweets, which initiates a quote-unquote chase from a puppet. She pours the lamp oil on the floor, and it slips and disintegrates. Uh, okay. Some toys that were inconspicuously standing in front of the backroom door begin chasing Grace. I actually got stunlocked in the laggy emulator during this scene, which is what prompted me to switch to a different one. Editing Ben here. We need to talk for a second. For this video, I played through the game more times than a normal person should due to all the glitches. While I was editing, I had to fully replay the broken version of the game because I realized I forgot to record the audio. After doing that, I have a lot more to say about the broken emulator and how the game is experienced with sound. There is music, but I wish there wasn't. It is the same exact loop for the entire game, with no changes, and it's this upbeat tune that makes me even less scared by this already oddly child-friendly game in a horror series. Alone in the Dark was rated M, and its sequel's promotional game looks and sounds like this. Not only that, the game also glitched on me during the final scene. I obviously won't show it yet because of spoilers, but there's one final action that you have to take to win. I went into the menu to hit the button for said action, and proceeded to die inside of the menu, even though the game is paused when you're in that menu. This is the game over screen you see every time you die at any point in the game. I do not have an explanation for what the heck is going on here, but I'll attempt to touch on it later. Let's get back to the playthrough. Grace uses the power of drums to lure the toys into the chest before closing it on their heads. Just listen to that beautiful music. Del delightful. 
There's a vanity box and a mirror in the corner. These two dolls are blocking a jail cell with Santa inside, so I tried to get them to walk away from it by dropping different things on the floor that might interest them. I think I got a little bit too close here, since I softlocked the game and had to start all over to avoid forcing Grace to do squats for eternity. Grace lures the dolls away from the cell with a vanity chest. Grace can't get the cell door open, but they did drop a stick of candy, so she grabs that and leaves. What you're supposed to do next is really dumb. I can understand the basic concept behind pouring oil on the ground to make an enemy slip. I can kinda get the drum puzzle, you know, make a little marching line with the toys, you've seen that in movies, whatever, move it behind the chest and then they'll all jump in, it kinda makes sense. But I don't get this one. Grace gives the candy to the jack-in-the-box as a distraction, then holds up the mirror so he can see what he looks like. His own appearance spooks him to death. I don't understand why we needed to give him the candy in the first place, because he didn't really seem hostile when we walked up, but I guess he's dead now? Yay. In the back room, Grace finds a present from Santa who has left, meaning he was just able to escape perfectly fine that whole time? Wait, why was he there in the first place? It's October. Whatever. Wearing a different costume from the gift box, Grace leaves and waves goodbye to Santa. Still not fully over that one. We finally get something that's actually worth our time at the very end, with a preview of screenshots from Alone in the Dark 2. It seems we play as Edward Carnby, which makes me excited to have chosen him as my player character in the original. The backgrounds look just as good as in this one, so that is a major plus. Every single screenshot has tons of enemies, so there may be more combat or more stealth. Furthermore, Grace is actually here in a few of the screenshots, so this preview seems to act as a character introduction for her in the next game. Kind of a Life is Strange 2 situation. They really like showing off this pirate ship, which admittedly looks awesome. So that's where we're left off. It maintained the weird puzzle logic from the original, which is unfortunate, but the visuals were a major step up, which is good. It wasn't scary, which isn't great for a horror game, but I'm still greatly looking forward to trying out the sequel that was teased. The preview at the end was the most enjoyable part of the game, and it looks like Alone in the Dark 2 is going to have a more eerie tone like the original instead of the goofy and childlike one we got from Jack in the Dark. There is one other bonus that makes me even more excited for the sequel. For the most part, I finally figured out sprinting. I hope to see you all again. Have a great rest of your day.